Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder guide we have the Blood Rager as requested a lot of times. Blood Ragers are somewhat of a mix between Barbarian and Sorcerer so you have some spellcasting while still retaining full base attack bonus progression and Rage. While Demon might be thematically more appropriate, I'm afraid we are going with Trickster, I'm sorry it's just way better in my humble opinion. Because the demon's main benefits are limited in uses per day. The best trickster powers are all passive, so they are always in effect, which to me makes for a much more fun playstyle. Plus, you even have free sneak attack progression, which every melee character will want, and even the ability to break the game's rules apart, such as, for example, achieving even higher than 20 base attack bonus, something usually limited only to the legend mythic path. Plus, of course, you get amazing attack bonus. It can go way higher than here, as this is not fully buffed. Potentially more than 10 attacks per round too, not counting all of the attacks of opportunity. And the best part of Trickster, extreme critical range combined with extreme critical damage. You can definitely deal higher than 1000 damage with critical hits, as all of these here come from the same single attack. Our armor class is low and we have a lot of penalties to it, this doesn't really matter, because our character also has pretty decent melee reach, so we can attack the enemies from far away. So without further ado, let us get into our Blood Rager build. So I'll be blunt, if it was up to me, I would certainly pick Blood Rider, because you know it is the archetype that gets the pet. And pets are OP, simple as. However, for this guide in particular, I'll be going with Primalist, as I think more people have requested this than Blood Rider. The main advantage of Primalist is, well first, Blood Rager gets bloodlines, just like a sorcerer, and some bloodline powers every few levels or so. The Primalist can choose to replace one of these bloodline powers every four levels for two Barbarian Rage powers instead. And to put it simply, in most cases, replacing them is the more powerful choice because Rage powers really are that great. The problem is I usually go with Scalds and the Scald can share the same exact Rage powers with the entire party, including pets and summons. Meanwhile, the Blood Rager, like a Barbarian, only applies them to themselves. So I think it's a bit easy to understand that the Scald is simply way more efficient. But you know, as it is probably the most unique Blood Rager archetype and the one that has been requested the most, I'll be doing my Blood Rager build as Primalist. For race, honestly, I'd really go with Human, I know humans yet again, but what can I say? Blood Ragers are going to be feet starved for most of their progression because they don't get any extra feet. I mean, they do get some extra feats from the bloodlines, but these feats aren't the ones we want. So to me, human is the way to go. For background, the usual street urging and pickpocket for the bonus initiative. For ability point allocation, strength is the way to go. We want it as high as possible. Some dexterity just for attacks of opportunity. Wealth charisma is certainly more than enough. You can get the rest through headbands. You only need 14 to cast all of your Blood Rager spells anyways. You can then dump either intelligence or wisdom. Intelligence is safer since wisdom is tied to will saving throws. So you can get 16 constitution. Constitution has a bit of synergy with your Blood Rage ability, the uses are based on it, it's just that as soon as around level 5 we can have infinite uses of our Blood Rage anyways, but still constitution is great for hit points too. As far as skill allocation, mostly athletics because of high strength, you can go with persuasion too, although we won't have that high charisma, and use magic device is always a must have to cast powerful scrolls from other classes, especially as our Blood Rage spell list is pretty poor in comparison to, you know, wizard or cleric. And if you didn't go with human, so you have even less skill points, just go for athletics and use magic device. For level 1 feats, well, it's the usual four two-handed characters. And since we are going trickster, we absolutely want the Grave Singer Great Axe. Yes, I know it's another Grave Singer build, but what can I say? It is the best weapon in the game overall, especially for this build in particular. You could potentially go with something like Falchion's too if you want. It's just not going to be as good as the Grave Singer Axe. So power attack, and also cleave for the extra attack even at level 1. While cleave will become useless after you get your second attack at level 6, we will be getting cleaving finish, which remains useful for the whole game. Now, for your bloodline powers, this is pretty important. The one that stands out the most is Celestial, because your angelic attacks gained at level 1 is quite powerful. Whenever you are raging, and as I said, it will soon become pretty much infinite, your melee attacks are considered good aligned weapons for bypassing damage reduction, which is great against all demons, as this lets you do full damage against them even early game. Plus, whenever you hit an evil outsider, so all demons, 
With a melee attack, you deal an additional 1d6 points of irresistible damage. Even better because like I said, it comes right at level 1, so you have the entire game to benefit from this. I don't really think any of the other bloodlines has something as useful, at least not on level 1. The other bloodline that stands out is Serpentine. The Serpentine Fang ability at level 1 grants you an extra bite attack, which is always great. It is an extra attack after all. Plus, at level 12, you'll get the very unique and powerful Serpentine Elasticity to grant you extra reach during Blood Rage. For the 80, since we are going with Trickster, any that allows the Chaotic Alignments. Gorum fits this build just fine, he is the God of Battle. And then, Chaotic Good is actually the choice if you want to min max because of the Bestow Grace spell, which only works on good aligned characters. For level 3, cleaving finish as usual, the extra attack is amazing. At level 4, we get our first choice between keeping a Bloodline power or replacing it for two Rage powers. What you want, of course, is the two Rage powers. Then increase Strength, which is also what you should be increasing on all of the other levels. Now, your Rage power selection can go a number of different ways. Because I always go with Scalds, I want to show you a way that you can combine both your Blood Rager with your Scald while remaining efficient so they won't overlap. For this, since I usually pick Lethal Stance with my Scald, you want your Blood Rager to go with Reckless Stance instead. Stance powers don't stack if you're the same, but if they're different ones, they can work together. The thing is you can only activate one at the same time, so you have the Scald with Lethal, and the Blood Rager with Reckless Plus. Reckless Stance also allows us to use Inspire Ferocity, which lets us apply Reckless Stance to our entire party. So your Blood Rager is kind of a mini scald. This grants bonuses to attack rolls, which are always amazing, but penalty to armor class. And if you don't want your tanks to suffer this penalty, simply have them deny the rage, something you can choose in your ability tab. But anyways, Reckless Stance. I would delay Inspire Ferocity, if only because, amusingly enough, you can stack Bite Attacks, I have tested them. It's a rare case, but your Skull's Animal Fury will stack with your Blood Rager's Animal Fury for two Bite Attacks. Now we also get to pick our first Blood Rager spells. Honestly, like I said before, most of them are pretty poor. <laughs> you just want to focus on the buffs, so... True Strike, and of course, Enlarged Person, which is a must-have. For level 5, we have to go with Outflank. It's always a must-have, and since we are a high base attack bonus character, we can pick it earlier than others. We are kind of starved for feet, so we have to pick Outflank now. For more spells, you might as well go with Shield. Honestly, you'll just be using your early Blood Rager spells for Enlarge or True Strike anyways. For level 6, we get a bonus feat. In this case, I'd rather go for Improve at Initiative. The main reason is... Weapon focus into, let's say, Great Axes, we'll be getting it later because the best Great Axe can only be found at around level 10 plus. Improved initiative can also help because if you act before the enemy, you catch them flat-footed, even at the reasonably early levels. Flat-footed enemies have lower AC, the higher the difficulty too. You can pick any level 1 spell here, might as well go with Mage Armor since it has high duration and you can use it to buff your pets. For level 7, it's time to get one of the most OP feats just recently added to the game. And here we are, the ever so powerful Lunge, which grants our character reach pretty much for free. Now we also get our first level 2 spells, mostly Mirror Image and False Life. The animal buffs, you can really leave them for other spellcasters. At level 8, once again, we are choosing Rage Powers, and I'd say you have two choices now. You can pick Inspire Ferocity already, or you can delay this for later and instead focus on getting both the lesser Daemon Totem. The effect is kinda useless, <laughs> it's mostly for the normal Daemon Totem, which lets you inflict negative levels on the enemies without a save whenever you score a critical hit. And well, you are getting loads and loads of criticals, especially once you get the Grave Singer Axe and get the Trickster Feats. Since it will take a while for that, it is only at around level 13 where we truly get the ultimate critical hit chance, I'd rather just go for Inspire Ferocity, and then just a normal Demon Totem. For another level 2 spell, we can go with anything you want. For level 9, Improve at Critical at last, we can pick it earlier because we are a high base attack bonus class. And of course, Great Axe. And then as a bonus feat, for the same reason, Weapon Focus and Great Axe. Any other level 1 spell here, it doesn't matter. Look, while I know that the Blood Rager can cast some spells as swift actions during his rage, I'm sorry, it's just worthless. <laughs> Because the spells are super poor, especially in a game like Wrath where demons all have high elemental resistance and also high spell resistance. The same for any other level 2 spell. Now for your first level 3 spells, as usual haste is a must have, depending on your other party members, they can already cast this 
way before you, including a Bard or Scald, which gets haste at level 7. Still, the more characters that can cast haste, the better, because the less you have to rest, as you'll always want to have haste on. Besides that, Greater Magic Weapon is also amazing, especially for the super high duration. For level 11, go with Combat Reflexes, we can't really delay it anymore, as you'll soon be getting our OP Trickster critical feats, and the more critical hits you get, the more attacks of opportunity you also get throughout flank, thus Combat Reflexes. Your other level 3 spells don't matter that much, you can pick Vampiric Touch if you want some extra hit points. At level 12, you can get more Rage Powers for, like I said, the level drain on critical hits ability, which is very powerful as we are so maxing out our critical range. Pick Toughness here, the other ones don't really matter. And then the normal Daemon Totem. You might as well pick the greater version here too. Whenever you kill a creature, you'll heal 5 hit points, and if you're already at maximum HP, you'll get 5 temporary HP instead, which won't stack. Like I said, it's not like you'll be taking much damage as a rich character, especially after lunge and size enhancing spells. But because of the synergy with the Bane of Spirit Ring, which drains your hit points so that your damage becomes fully irresistible, I think this can be pretty fun so you won't have to heal. Plus, you know, it's something unique. I never go for the Daemon Totem on my Scalds. They already get Beast Totem instead. So why not do something different for once? Any level 1 spell here, it doesn't matter. The same for level 2 ones. As for level 3, well, if you already picked Rage, you might as well pick Vampiric Touch. Now, from level 13 onwards, we'll be multiclassing our character for two main reasons. First, because we already have almost everything we could want from Blood Rager. Your level 4 Blood Rager spells are pretty poor overall, so losing them is nothing. You'll get extra spells from Trickster anyways. We even have the Greater Blood Rage ability already. The next upgrade only comes at level 20, which is super late. Second, for extra feats, and this is super important, as you are about to see. Remember that for any Trickster build, before getting to level 13, be sure to level your character to Mythic rank 4 and get Perception rank 1 and 2 tricks, because they are the abilities that qualify you for the special Trickster feats, which we'll be getting now. The multi-class in combo I find the best to go now into is Fighter and Mutation Warrior. We keep our high base attack bonus progression, we'll soon get the Mutagen, which is super powerful, it's the same for weapon training. Most importantly, we'll be getting lots of extra feats, which we do need. And get this, as per the most recent patch, every single class in the game can also get the Trickster special critical feats as bonus feats, and this is absolutely huge. We get to pick the first one right here at 13, and then already jump right into the second one because of our fighter bonus feat. So just at 13, we'll already increase our critical range by a massive amount. 11 to 20 with our Great Axe. For level 14, the last of the Trickster special critical feats for even higher critical damage. Then for level 15, well, we need to get started on our Shatter Defenses package, so that's in display. We'll only be able to pick Shatter Defenses at 16, one level later, but you know, Getting all of the fun trickster stuff so early more than makes up for that. Then at level 16, Shatter Defenses at last. For level 17, Weapon Specialization and Great X and Weapon Training Axes. Now, since we already have both the Mutagen with high duration and also Weapon Training, I would rather go for the classic Ranger and Demon Slayer Deep for a very useful plus 2 to attack and damage against all demon enemies in the game including Demon Lords. Now I would just resume progression in Mutation Warrior. At level 19, be sure to pick Meta Magic and Completely Normal spell on our special Trickster feat. The main reason is to add more casts of the ultimate Trickster spell, Trick Fate, since you'll be able to cast it at Trickster 7 and also 6. Then as a bonus feat, you can truly pick anything you want here. I'll just be going for Blind Fight because, you know, as usual, some enemies late game have consumed sources that aren't bypassed by true Sin. Then at level 20, we get our discovery at last. And be sure to pick Feral Mutagen because Bite attacks do stack, at least as far as this patch. Alright, now let us talk mythic progression for our Blood Rager Trickster. Close to the abysses, as always, the must have for melee characters. The gore attack means an extra attack per round, and there's a lot of extra modifiers to damage that can be applied on top of this. Then for Mythic level 1, as with almost any Rager build, you'll want Limitless Rage, so you can permanently have your Rage bonuses. For Mythic level 2, Mythic Power Attack. Since we are two-handing, we get a massive bonus from this. 
especially as we get more base attack bonus from leveling up. And as a trickster, we'll even be able to break 20 BAB. For Mythic 3, as usual, ever ready. It's always amazing, but especially overpowered for tricksters, since it has amazing synergy with critical hits. And tricksters have the ultimate critical range possible, not just for themselves, but even for party members. Now, as far as your Mythic tricks, please remember that I already have a complete guide for trickster where I cover every single one of these in depth. You can check it to the site here or in the pinned comment down below. Although nowadays I've been thinking of making an updated version of it, it's been a while. But anyways, Arcana rank 1 for more enhancement bonuses to gear you find, even gear that went stats. So a belt of plus 2 strength becomes plus 3. As for Mythic rank 4, as always Mythic critical great X. you can already get the Grave Singer great X by now, and it's truly OP. And then, very important, Perception rank 1 and rank 2 Mythic tricks so that you get access to the very important Trickster Special Critical Feats. Now you are free to resume progression into level 13+, plus for normal building level up. Now for Mythic rank 5, I'd personally pick Mythic Charge, as I do have a Scald to provide pounds. But you know, even if you didn't have a Scald, you could potentially pick all of the Beast Totem line of Rage Powers with your Blood Rager. You could also go for a second Blood Rager bloodline, the problem is as far as I'm aware, this is bugged for the Primalist archetype. For some strange reason, maybe it's not coded properly. Let's say you pick Serpentine here, and you want to get the Serpentine Elasticity ability for higher reach. It's not going to be added to your character. Only Serpentine Fang is going to be added. So to me, it is Mythic Charge. Then Athletics rank 1, which basically lets you avoid most enemy debuffs. For Mythic level 6, Mythic Improved Initiative. The faster we can act, the faster we can destroy the enemies in just one round. And then Knowledge World rank 1, and Athletics rank 2, which allows your Blood Rager to pretty much make all saving throws in the game. For Mythic level 7, honestly, at this point you kinda ran out of the best Mythic stuff for your Blood Rager. There are still some feats we want, but abilities, not really. Might as well already pick less than here for the Demon Lord battles, although you really aren't dying. Or, since you are getting the level 1 power of the bloodline anyways, you could, you know, pick Serpentine for the extra bite attack. Then you can go with Mobility rank 1 here, just for higher speed. And Athletics rank 3, a super powerful mythic trick for any high base attack bonus character, because it lets you break the cap of 20 BAB. For mythic level 8, Mythic Weapon Specialization and Great X. And then I'd go for UMD rank 1 here, and World 2, which gives you and your whole party even more critical range. As for Mythic level 9, you can truly pick anything you want here. I'm just picking the Serpentine Bloodline here just for the bite attack. Then this can now go in a number of different ways. You can pick Lore Religion 1 here and 2 for 2 domain powers, or you can pick Lore Nature 1 for some super minor bonuses when resting, and Reuse Magic Device here, which is UMD 2, and then UMD 3 at Mythic 10, which gives you a full scaling wizard spellbook. The problem is, at Mythic 10 you know the game is over, you only have the first DLC left to do, so I'm just saying it is something you can do if you want. I'll just go for Religion 1 and Religion 2. The Serpentine Bloodline will grant you some feats at Mythic 9, but they are kinda useless at this point. So just pick Deceitful, Lightning Reflexes and the other one is up to you, both don't matter for our builds. As far as your domains from Lord Religion rank 2, you truly have an amazing number of options. I mean, you can even give your character an animal companion now, it's just that at this point there's not much left to do, but it is an option. Artifice can be pretty fun because of the Lead Blade spell. And there's also Luck for Divine Fortune, which is amazing, if you don't want to choose the Extend Fortune Hex. War can grant you a lot of extra damage, but super short-lasting, and even an extra feat. I'll just go Law for the Staff of Order ability. I enjoy the irony of being a chaotic trickster with the Law domain. <laughs> Plus, it grants you 2d6 irresistible damage against demons. Chaotic creatures, really. Some of the non-demonic outsiders enemies from the first DLC are also chaotic, so this works against them. It does have short duration and low uses though, but you know, at this point it's basically for free and an extra to our build. As for Mythic rank 10, you can truly pick anything you want here. Mythic Sneak Attacker for 1d6 extra sneak, even something like Mythic Toughness. 
or like mythic skill focus into athletics, so you'll truly never ever fail any saving throws. And of course, an extra mythic ability too, if you prefer. Alright, now let's cover items and gear for our Blood Rager Trickster. It's going to be similar to most of my melee builds, there's not much you can change overall as far as the best items, so... Valaxis Magnifying Amulet, and before that, Amulet that increase initiative. For armor, as usual, it doesn't matter because you have reach, so just go with the Chainmail of Comradery. For the plus 4, bonus damage when flanking. For the shirt or robe slot, I like the shirt of Blazing Fighter. For the nice bonus to athletics. For the belt slots, at first belts of strength, then strength and constitution, but eventually, I would go for the Mangling Frenzy belt, because it adds an extra 4d6 slashing damage, which is great, on every critical hit, and we have super high critical chance when you are raging. Even if you don't have a skull to provide rage, it doesn't matter, because the Blood Rager has his own rage. Just remember, because this damage is added separately to your character, you'll want to combine it with the Bane of Spirit Ring. For gloves, as usual, Fencer's Gift, especially for this character, because we have Weapon Training from Mutation Warrior, so it's not just a bonus to our two-handed damage, but also a plus two to Weapon Training. For the boot slot, since we have Athletics, as always, the boots of Stampede for maximum damage when charging, even if you don't have a Scald, you can still get the Beast Totem line of Rage Powers on your Blood Rager, so you can get Pounce on yourself. For the Helmet slot, at first, Headbands of Charisma, but eventually just go for the Hat of the Bitter End. The stacking bonus to attack rolls is huge, and then combine it with the Broken Trickster Glasses as usual, since this already increases your Wisdom and Charisma anyways. For Cloaks, just settle for Cloaks of Resistance with the highest modifier, the Trickster Mythic Cloak, unfortunately, is plain garbage, the worst of all of them. For rings, as usual, the Ring of Limited Demise, if you are two-handing. And of course, there's always the Bane of Spirit. As we have the Greater Demon Totem Rage Power, that will constantly replenish our hit points, I would rather leave this to the Trickster themselves, so you can easily pay for the hit points cost whenever you want. But there's always the Ring of Evasion too, as you can easily get pretty high reflex. As for Braces, just the braces of Abrupt on slot. After all, it's more sneak attack damage, which we do get from Trickster anyways. Now let's discover weapons and quick slots. Honestly, the Grave Singer still remains the best, especially in the hands of a Trickster, since we can increase its already overpowering critical range and critical damage even higher. There's just no comparison whatsoever, and remember, you can enhance it a lot through the aid of certain buffs and abilities like Greater Magic Weapon for plus 5 Enhancement, Crusader's Edge for Evil Outsider Bane, there's also Holy Sword from Paladin, or the Holy Lance ability from Sociel for extra Holy Damage, Blast Weapon from Scylla too, there's a lot of buffs you can add to it. For the early game, however, be sure to go with Glaives and Bardishes, Chapter 1 usually, as you get a lot of good ones there and they are rich weapons, then for Chapter 2, the Wide Sweep Sight. Chapter 3 on Mars is when you should focus on the Gravesinger, but since we have Lunge for Reach and also Size Spells, even decently early in the game, you can also go with Great Access early if you prefer. It's just that outside of Gravesinger, they aren't that special. Now, for Quick Slots, a Lesser Extend Meta Magic Rod and also a Normal Extend one as usual. For higher buff duration, you get some spells as Blood Rager, even to increase the duration of some Trickster buffs too. The Greater Quicken Rod is only here so that you can quicken the ultimate trickster spell trick fate. The Dragon Familiar Jarsigax, as always, extra damage is never too much, and we can just convert it into irresistible anyways through Bane of Spirit. Don't forget, you can also use scrolls from any other class because of your decent use magic device ranks. Good choices are, as usual, the divine supportive scrolls like Mass Heal. There's also Heal, Restoration, and so on. And of course, other arcane buffs too, that you won't get access to from Blood Rager. The Signet of House of Spertilio is here to increase the skill of choice. In the hands of a Trickster, it's even better, because the higher your skills, the better some mythic tricks will become, like Athletics rank 1 and 2, or even Trickery and Mobility 2, depending on what you pick during mythic progression. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Blood Rager guide. As always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member, I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends, most likely with an updated Archer Guide, as I don't tend to do Archer builds that much. Let's see if we can change that.